Welcome to another video from Lachlan Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to review a multimeter which has got the oscilloscope function now I'm aware that one or two of you don't like reviews um, so with respect if you don't like reviews I, I'm not making you watch them you know maybe now's a good time to move on to something else and vote with your feet if you are interested though what I'm going to look at is this it's the Zotec ZD701 it's a new uh, instrument they've brought out it's uh, a scope multimeter um, slightly smaller than their previous versions that I've actually been quite impressed with so uh, we'll have a look at it working as a meter and a scope and uh, then I'll tell you what I think here's the ZT701 on the bench then it's currently uh, started up in uh, multimeter mode you just uh, press the button on the left here uh, to turn power on give you some idea of scale that's the ZT703, the dual channel uh, oscilloscope meter, also made by Zoya. This one uh, is a very nice bit of kit. In fact, you see Adrian from Adrian's Digital Basement. He makes good use of his as well. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, so it's quite a bit smaller than that and a little bit more compact. Um, so we've got, obviously, a menu button and uh, four cursor keys around it. Power button on that side. On this side here, we've got buttons for hold and save and for the change in the mode and for also uh, auto set. Um, what I do quite like is a long menu press uh, changes the form such that the display is now reading sideways. So if you want to do it that way you can. Now a long press will turn that back again and if I press mode uh, we go into oscilloscope um, which you can See, there's the scope. I've currently got a sine wave feeding into it. Um, and uh, a long press on the menu there brings up an uh, extra set of menu settings there. But if we now just pop back into meter and do that long press to convert it like that, if we now change over, we've got scope in that display, uh, which um, gives you a little bit uh, a more display area, if you like, and then a long press on this button here uh, saves a BMP file um, onto the internal memory. Uh, I'll put a screen grab of that on for you, which looks like this, um, which doesn't work too badly at all. Uh, and depending on how you like your display, you can have it uh, sort of either way up. Right, I'm going to get set up to, to take some measurements and have a look at the scoping operation. So I'll get set up for that and then uh, we'll see how she fares. OK, here's a, hopefully a, a better display of the um, the scopes uh, display, zoomed in a little bit. Um, and uh, the display is relatively intuitive. Um, cursor keys here, change the time base. And here I can change the uh, amplitude. Uh, now I've got it set to um, display more measurements. So we've got um, uh, RMS, we've got duty cycle, we've got uh, frequency, volts peak to peak, um, and various other bits and pieces on here. Uh, currently I'm feeding it with a, a signal which is uh, 10 kilohertz. Um, so if I just... Uh, get the machine set up to hopefully uh, so speed that up now so we'll go straight up to 100 kilohertz there and let's just tweak the time base a little bit so you can see how she's working and uh, if we want to go to um, square wave you can see uh, obviously the limitations of having uh, unshielded leads there I mean we've got a little bit of ringing on that uh, that edge probably to be expected. So uh, if I now increase the frequency that's that's up at uh, 500 kilohertz. Let's continue. It is struggling with a 500 kilohertz uh, square wave. If we go um, to a triangle wave it does a great deal better actually. I'll just uh, uh, change that to sign for a moment um, yeah so 
certainly uh, up to a megahertz, no trouble at all. It'll it'll read a sine wave reasonably well up to uh, up to seven or eight megahertz. But obviously, you're asking a great deal of uh, of those leads if you if you do that kind of thing. But um, there we go. Yeah. So um, we've obviously got the settings as I described there, and if we want to do a long press on there we can save a screen we'll just have a look at that screen grab now and now what I'm going to do is just going to reduce the frequency somewhat and we've got a waveform there but we don't know what so if I just press the auto button I didn't press it enough um, there we go it fairly quickly finds out what we've got and it's saying we've got uh, uh, 90 kilohertz there which is uh, correct at uh, about 10 volts peak to peak so yeah the, the scope um, works nicely uh, obviously you're limited a little bit by the fact that you haven't got screen leads but um, I do like the fact that you can change the display um, that, that is rather nice so if I just pop onto there do a long press and get it that way up um, put it there you can hopefully still see it yes um, and then let's go back to scope so you get an idea of um, what's going on um, and the measurements are all laid out at the bottom for the uh, for the scope when it's in the uh, I guess that's portrait mode isn't it rather than landscape so that's the functions of the scope um, I'll just get uh, one or two components and we'll check how the meter works but I'm not expecting it to be uh, to be too much of a problem these uh, cheap and cheerful multimeters are usually pretty good at, uh, at the basic uh, measurements okay here's the meter now set up with the few components so we can have a look at the uh, multimeter functions so left and right cursor keys change between the various modes here we've got volts millivolts uh, we've got resistance um, and when you're in apologies when you're in Resistance up or down takes you into capacitance. Um, go back here. That's diode. That's continuity. Takes you back to diode. So, while we're there, let's have a look at uh, a diode. I've got a red LED here. And reverse bias showing nothing, which you'd expect. Let's try it the opposite way. See the LED is dimly lighting down well you can see that. And we're getting the forward um, junction voltage of the red LED there. So that does nicely and counter there gives you continuity. Not too bad actually. Um, so moving along then uh, we're now into resistance. So I've got uh, opposite ends of the scale here, I've got 10 ohms. Um, yep, I think that's, uh, that's pretty good. And this resistor here actually checks out at about 8.09 on my, uh, that's 8.09 mega ohms on my um, LCR meter. Let's see what this makes of it. It's quite a high resistance. There you go, yeah. Pretty much agrees with the LCR meter actually, so that's that's good, yeah. And finally capacitance, if we press the up key there, that takes us into capacitance. It says it goes from 10 nanofarads. Let's um let's put it under a bit of pressure and give it a 2 nanofarad, well 2.2 N. See what it makes of that. There you go. 2.2 N, I think that's pretty good. And then finally I've got a 470 microfarad electrolytic. Take it a moment or two, I would imagine, to, to check that. Yeah, there we go. Within about, within about 12 microfarads, I think that's pretty good. What I like is that it's showing microfarads and not, um, not millifarads, which some of these meters do. It's showing you the... Um, uh, value that would, would be shown on the outside of the component. So yeah, okay, that's the meter with its various modes and as you can see um, Yeah, absolutely fine. It also uh, It also does voltage, but uh, it doesn't do current Okay, well there you go. We've got uh, the new 
Zotec scope multimeter. Incidentally, when you're in the um, uh, mode for getting the the pictures or the screen grabs off the meter, uh, there's also a folder in there called firmware. Currently, there's nothing in it, uh, and there isn't any firmware updates on the Zotec website uh, as uh, as of the day I'm recording this video. Um, but I suspect if it's like all their other instruments, if you pop the latest firmware into that folder, um, the meter will automatically update itself, which looks uh, very straightforward indeed. So there you go. Now, Zotec sent me this uh, free of charge, um, and that's um, the only thing they did. They haven't specified that I say anything particular. I'm not being paid or sponsored in any other way. So um, I feel I'm completely free to say what I like. Yes, it's um, it's all right. It's not as capable as uh, their previous models that have got uh, the proper oscilloscope probes. But from a handy point of view for keeping on the bench, yeah, very nice. You can have a quick look at a waveform. You can do uh, uh, most of the measurements that matter. So from an electronics hobbyist point of view, yeah. Excellent. Uh, I'd be more than happy to uh, to recommend that. I'm going to put a, a link in the description to the uh, manufacturer's website, and if I can get one, I'll also put one to to a place where uh, where they're for sale. But uh, yeah, certainly uh, uh, one to look at in a, a field that's uh, becoming increasingly busy when it comes to these uh, uh, oscilloscope meters. Hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching and look forward to seeing you on the next video.